Like any gadget, you need an operator's manual to know how to work it, and this gadget is no exception. What makes the Zarja different from other gadgets is the fact that it has existed, in one version or another, for over 7,000 years. Probably the original operator's manuals have long since disappeared, but one that has survived, the famous I Ching, from the late 9th century BCE, gives us an idea of how chance was used in combination of lists of previous predictions to tailor-made responses for any particular consultation. The Zaja we're using with the Lalang project, a series of Zoom seminars leading to a collection of essays, is a list of terms and topics related to Lalang, which is language after all the words are subtracted. Jacques Lacan coined this term to show just how much we communicate through size, gestures, silences, puns, homophonics, and side effects. To introduce this idea I thought I would play this clip from the Marx Brothers movie Coconuts. Groucho Marx is trying to explain to Chico, whose English is limited, the meaning of the word used to indicate a bridge over a body of water or other low spot. Here is a little peninsula, and uh, here is a viaduct leading over to the mainland. Viaduct. I'm all right, how are you? I say here is a little peninsula, and here is a viaduct leading over to the mainland. All right, viaduct. I'm not playing ask me another, I say that's a viaduct. All right, viaduct. It's why that viaduct, why are no chicken? Well, uh, I don't know why are no chicken. I'm a stranger here myself. All I know is that it's a viaduct. You try to cross over there in a chicken, and you'll find out viaduct. Chico pesters Groucho to admit that the ducks are already there, not just in the idea, but in the word viaduct. He's right, in a poetic way. The sound is there, but Chico goes further, to show how any bridge over a body of water is likely to have some ducks in it. Of course the argument is ridiculous, but with Lalang this kind of concealment always comes with a grain of truth that is usually funny when we pursue it. With Lalang, there's always the sense that someone is breaking the rules, so let's take a look at the rules. Ferdinand de Saussure, the 19th century linguist who was Lacan's starting point for thinking about the signifier, became famous for his insistence that the relation between things and the words that identify them is completely arbitrary. Although there are some obvious cases where words sort of sound like what they are naming, the fact that different languages call the same thing by different names was Saussure's point, that it was important to separate the signifier from the signified. Different languages establish their words as simple conventional choices. This right-angle diagram lets us show the difference between the horizontal movement of metonymies, basically a chain of signifiers that make up the flow of speech, and the contrasting vertical support of sound, which we could say is the material cause of speech. This is where metaphor, puns, and jokes take place. As metonymy moves forward in time, we might say that meaning operates from a distance, allowing for differences in interpretation without interrupting the forward flow, so when the vertical sound vector swings up to complicate this forward flow, as Chico does with his insistence on the ducks in a viaduct, it resonates from the position of the X beneath the signifying chain. It is almost as if the viaduct is the perfect model of the signifying chain, and the ducks beneath them are quacking in the distance. If we consolidate the ducks into duckiness, we get the idea of how metonymy is susceptible to contamination by Lalang. In other words, Lalang is a kind of contamination of meaning by meaningfulness, with something alien, but at the same time not only familiar, but overly familiar. We Freudian Lacanians would be tempted to think of the familiar story of Seminar 5, the formations of the unconscious. It is difficult to untangle the symptoms of a joke, a slip of the tongue, a contronym, or just a witticism. It is all these things plus more, if we understand the logic of anaphora, the figure of speech, where there is a hinge, something that stays put, which allows something else to transform, not just to something different, but to something deeply meaningful. There is indeed a Jekyll Hyde relationship in the way we allow the same to be different in language. The conventional relation of signifiers to signifieds gives the metonymic project of the signifying chain something to think about. The spooky part is that in metonymy's attempt to maintain the same in the face of the different, something else is doing the thinking. 
This is where Lalang happens, where the unconscious speaks through us as if we were a ventriloquist's puppet. We immediately recognize the two characteristics that define the projective topology of the torus, Mobius band, cross cap, and Klein bottle. Self-intersection and non-orientation summarize the situation of Lalang as the language of the unconscious. It must infect the body of language with a juicence of semblance. This must be why Lacan revised the labels for his Matheme of Discourse to set up a new dynamic for the circuit that the signifier must complete to conserve the energy of speech. In this new setup, which began after Lacan's middle seminars focused on topology, the hysteric played the main role, as the pornse so vast who would act out within the stately halls of language, or the wild man or rather wild woman, who would speak a scandalous truth by destroying the principle of non-contradiction. It would be possible to go a lot further with this conjecture. But we're here to learn how to use a 7,000-year-old computer, so it's time to reboot. If you want to hold on to anything, remember that the Zaja itself is a machine that constructs the same out of the different. Even in the I Ching's operating instructions, we read the warning label that the only thing that doesn't change is change itself. With this in mind, let's take a look at the Zaja we will be using to create our own AI and see how Lalang allows us to hook up our own neural networks in the process. If you don't like or don't want to deal with some of the terms on the list we've assembled to talk about Lalang, feel free to strike them out. Or, if you would like to include some terms we didn't think about, feel free to do that too. The main thing is to incorporate randomness in your selection of the two terms, so that when you speculate about how the two terms might be related, this union will come about through a partnership you've made with chance. This will be your Jekyll Hyde component, your commitment to the unconscious of La Lang. Once you formalize some link between the two random terms, you make the link into a kind of general rule that has consequences for all the items on the list. This turns the effect, the discovered or invented relationship, into a cause. This is the function of the mirror, or cut, in the Zaja's operation. It is essential to convert what looks like an accident into a fated conclusion, the result of a determination that now determines everything else. There are some Lacanian reasons why this works, which have to do with demand and desire, the same reasons a mentalist like the British performer Darren Brown can pull off his tricks, but that's a subject for another time. The payoff of the Zaja is the pooling of results during the Zoom conversations. This is the I, the intelligence, of AI, the payoff in terms of a discourse charged with learning circuits that are personal rather than externally sourced. The Zaja grounds the discussion in an imaginary discourse that is trans rather than intersubjective. It may not lead to a Nobel Prize, but it will be, we promise, as engaging as it is entertaining.